Hi, in this video I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process on how I achieved this acrylic pour. First up, plain tap water. Mixing tools. Mixing cups. Silicon. This is an aerosol form from Lowe's. Floetrol, again from Lowe's. And acrylic water-based paints. The colours I have chosen for my pour are Pumpkin Orange by Apple Barrel, Matte Finish. Aquamarine by Apple Barrel, Matte Finish. Magenta by Folk Art, Gloss Finish. and Lavender Sachet by Apple Barrel Matte Finish. Okay, so how to mix your paints and how to do your flip cup pour. Take your first colour, give the bottle a quick shake and pour a small amount into one of your mixing cups. The amount will depend on how large a pour you are doing. Knowing how much paint to use will come with practice. Here, I have filled my cup up to about one centimetre in depth. Next, add a very small amount of water to begin with and mix well until both ingredients are fully combined. As a little tip, turn your cup at the same time as you mix to make sure you get into all the little corners at the bottom. Remember, I've edited this video down. Take as much time as it needs to get the right consistency. What you're looking for is a honey-like texture. If your mix is a bit blobby like this, just add a little more water. It is hard to tell from my camera angle, so I apologise, but here I have achieved a lovely honey-like trip. Next, it's time to add the Floetrol. First, give the bottle a really good shake. If you don't, it's going to pour out all gloopy and this just means more elbow grease later on. Pour in the same amount of Floetrol as you did paint. It's a one-to-one -one ratio that you're aiming for. And again, give it a really good mix. You're looking for that same honey texture as you did before. When the mix runs smooth and honey-like, that's your first colour done. Set it aside and on to the next. I chose to do the magenta next because I wanted to show you how using different brands and different paint finishes changes your process ever so slightly. The principles are exactly the same, but as you can see, after we've added the first few drops of water, the consistency is nowhere near where you want it to be. Therefore, just add some more water. Keep adding a few more drops of water until you've reached the right consistency. It's important to note that you always want to keep your flow troll and paint ratios at one to one 
So if you're finding the mix is still just a bit too blobby, just add water, not Floetrol. Just a couple more drops of water. Again, sorry about the camera angle, but hopefully you can see that this is just right now. So repeat this process for all your remaining colours. Try not to use too many colours if you want to achieve a similar look to mine, as I feel adding too many tends to muddy the overall look. You will also need white paint, mixed exactly the same way as your other colours, but keep your white separate and do not include it in the next step. Take your silicone spray and give it a quick shake. Add just one short spray to each colour. We're adding silicone to our pore because that's what helps create those lovely cells. Just a few twists to combine the colour with the silicon will do. Any more and your cells will start to reduce in size. So now for the actual pour. Take your white mix that has no silicon in it and add a portion to your flip cup. The white is great at helping carry all the other colours. Now it's up to you as to which colours you add and when. Experimenting is all part of the fun. You can pour all of one colour in at once or half of it now, half of it later. It's completely up to you. The more pours you do, the more you'll learn how changing all this up will affect the end result. But ultimately, try not to make it too much about the science and more about the fun. Also, at this point you might be thinking, that's a lot of paint. And it is, but if you don't use enough, it's hard to move the paint around on the tray later. So once all your colours are in, place your tray on top of your cup and once you've got a firm grip of both, flip the cup over. Tap the top to make sure that all that paint's ready to fall out. Position the cup just off centre so that when you lift and drag, you've got enough room. Make sure you get all that paint out as well, don't waste it. Next, I use a blowtorch to pop some of the bubbles. However, if you don't have one or another source of heat, just gently blow on the pour and this should pop most of them. Slow 
slowly and gently pick up and tilt your tray so that the paint reaches all the edges. I've sped this clip up quite a bit, so that kind of shows you how much time you should take on this step. Again, don't worry if you don't have a blowtorch or even a lighter. The bubbles will pop just as it's drying over the next couple of days. And it's a preference anyway. The bubbles do not affect the overall finish of the pour. I love all these beautiful colors and layers and those huge cells. I really hope that yours has come out looking great. Please leave any comments or questions or reviews or anything like that below um, and if it's any advice you might need I'd be thrilled to get back to you. Thank you so so much for watching, please like and subscribe and this is the first of many lovely crafty videos coming your way.